Correcting the gradients in an image taken with a color sensor and dual-band narrowband filters can be a delicate process. As we saw in the previous video, H-alpha nebulas aren't just in the red channel. They're also present in the green and blue channels. In this video, we're going to look at how to handle this problem. As Mars is an observational database, the observation bands are completely separate. This means that in MGC, we can assign one of these bands to a single primary color in the image. Although the gradient model for this image is very good in the red channel, in the green and blue channels, it's difficult to eliminate the large objects. In these channels, there are still bright traces of the H-alpha emission in the nebula on the left and a dark structure around the nebula on the right, resulting from over-extracting the oxygen-3. This solution is a compromise, and we can improve the gradient modeling by separating the emission lines. We can use the db-extract script to separate the H-alpha and oxygen-3 emission lines based on the sensor's quantum efficiency curves. We select the camera sensor here, then the color image containing the H-alpha and oxygen-3 emissions. The challenge when we use db-extract is that the sensor and filter specifications are not exact, and to separate the emission lines correctly, we need a custom formula. But we can actually customize that formula much more easily and precisely using pixel math, taking advantage of the flexibility of previews. That said, we're going to try separating the emission lines with a script. The script generates two images, one with the oxygen-3 and one with the H-alpha. We can use these two images to recompose a color image. We put the H-alpha in the red channel and the oxygen-3 in the green and blue channels. We stretch with STF, and now the H-alpha is much redder than it was in the original image, But if we look more closely, we can see that there are traces of the H-alpha emission in the green channel. Although we can try to adjust the factors manually in db-extract, it's much easier to find them using pixel math on a preview. Let's try this method now. First, we go to the preview. We're going to use three expressions in pixel math, one for each primary color, so we need to uncheck this checkbox. The red channel is simply the original image. For the green channel, we're going to subtract the red channel multiplied by a scale factor. So we input the original image minus the red channel of the original image, which is channel 0. Then we subtract the red channel median so that the sky background brightness isn't altered and we multiply all of this by a factor which will usually be quite small. And we do the same in the blue channel. Now we need to find the correct scale factor for each of the two channels. The good thing about this method is that if we use the same camera and the same filters, the scale factors will always be the same. We can therefore save a process icon for separating the emissions in all the images we take with the same color camera. To find the scale factors, we can look at the green and blue channels separately and adjust the values until the H-alpha structures disappear. Let's start with a high value because it's easier to overcorrect and then make adjustments until the overcorrection disappears. Let's try 0.5. Here, we're clearly inverting the whole nebula. Let's lower it to 0 0.3. Now, we are reducing the overcorrection. With 0 0.2, there's hardly any overcorrection. 
Let's lower it a bit more gradually now. 0 0.16 0 0.14 0 0.12 With 0 0.1, the overcorrection has disappeared, and the H-alpha subtraction is perfect. Let's see the result on the whole image. Now we discover that almost everything we had in the green channel wasn't actually oxygen-3, but H-alpha. That's why the gradient model was so incorrect in this part of the image. Let's move on to the blue channel. In this channel, we need to lower the factor even more because with a factor of 0 0.1, the structures are already slightly inverted. Let's try 0 0.08. Now 0 0.06. Probably 0 0.07. 0 0.07 for the blue channel and 0 0.01 for the green channel are the right ones for our camera and filter combination. They're quite different from the ones suggested by the manufacturer's quantum efficiency curves. If we save this icon, we can use it for every image taken with this equipment without having to change a thing. All we would need to do is make slight adjustments to the scale factors for images taking in anomalous atmospheric conditions. Once we've separated the emissions in the preview, we can apply the process to the main view. Now we can calibrate the flux and correct the gradients. We enable narrowband filters mode and input the correct bandwidths. Now we go to the preview and correct the gradients. We're going to use the same configuration as in the previous video, where we use the H-alpha band in the red channel and the oxygen-3 in the green and blue channels. Let's reset the scale values to find the correct ones. First, we apply the default settings. Let's look at each channel separately. Again, the H-alpha is overcorrected in the red channel, so we're going to lower the scale factor. Here, the nebulas are starting to look bright, so let's increase it a little. Now let's move on to the oxygen-3 channels, which are the more delicate ones. A scale factor of 1 has worked very well, but there is a slight overcorrection in the nebula on the right, so let's lower the scale factor a little. And we're going to do the same in the blue channel because there's a slight overcorrection. Finally, we correct the gradients and display the RGB image. Now that we've separated the emissions, MGC has corrected the vignetting perfectly without affecting either of the nebulas. Now, let's apply the process to the main view. Finally, we're going to calibrate the color using SPCC. We enable narrowband filters mode. We're going to use this corner of the image as the background reference.
Now the SPCC calibration graph shows a completely linear trend because we've corrected that dependency between the red and green channels. Now we link the RGB channels and stretch, and here's the finished image with the separated emissions, the gradient correction, and the color calibration. Thank you.